There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Joanne Froggart and Hugh Bonneville. Anyway, to start with, um, I want to ask both of you, Joanne, to start with you. As I mentioned, this is now the most popular show on TV. When you first, you know, got the script and were off of the role, did you think, oh, this is going to be big or... But this big? Did you ever think it could be this big? Um, I don't think you, you ever dare imagine, you know, how successful any job you do is going to be, because that's up to the lap of the gods and, and the audience, really. But um, I remember my agent calling me and saying, uh, oh, I ha you know, I'm, I'm sending you a script and, you know, Oscar winner Julian Fellows has written it and Dame Maggie Smith is attached to it. And I thought, oh, well, I'll give that a read. I think that might be quite a good, <laughs> quite a good start. So, um, and then as soon as I opened the script, it was just such a page turner. And for me, those scripts don't come along every day. And when, when you do get a script that you open and you literally can't put down, you, you know your instinct is just, this is brilliant, I really want to do this. Yeah. Um, and hopefully if you feel like that reading it, then as the, the viewers will feel like that as well. So. What did you think, Hugh, when you first got the script? Exactly the same, really. And I think that uh, sensation that we all felt when reading it is what's translated to the audience. It has got this unputdownable quality. The number of people who said that they've bought the box set and sat down to watch just one episode and they're still there at midnight on episode five because they're hooked. Julian has this capacity to, to hook you in and with a sort of uh, Dickensian structure of serialization, mm. if you like, and, and the soap element of hooking you in and making you want to know what happens next. And even if you don't like all the characters, you are invested in them in a way that you want to, you know, you demand to know what happens next. So it has that tug of, of what's going to happen mm. next because yeah. even though it appears to be a, a costume drama and we all know think we know that territory no one knows how this one ends when you read those <laughs> first films did, <laughs> did you think <laughs> this is something special this is uh, you know there are loads of costume dramas of you said but you did you immediately know yeah this is something different i think i, I think we all felt that <clears throat> that just reading it, by the end of reading episode, having read episode one, you just felt there were you know, 16 characters really vividly in my mind. And then, of course, when, the, when they started to be cast and fleshed out, it takes on a whole new level again. But it was that uh, sense of it being vivid from the, from the page, from the dialogue and from the interaction of characters that really made you feel you were in safe hands. But, as Joe says, you can never second-guess the audience. And what did you think about your character? Because he's, um, I guess he is the patriarch, the great patriarch of the whole show. But he's not perfect. In fact, he's quite, you know, there are, mo there are moments where he's quite <laughs> horrible, in a way, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. What, did, what yeah. did you think? No? OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for example, on Sunday's episode, he, you know, he was revealing various prejudices he's got about Irish people and, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, the poor girl who had a difficult past and all of that. <laughs> all that side to him is quite interesting, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah, and I'd just like to point out you know, to those who do follow me on Twitter, I am not actually Lord <laughs> Grantham. <laughs> yes. You know, I've had people saying they're going to unfollow me because I'm, you know, horrible to, you know, my daughters or whatever, or yeah. that I'm, I'm bad with investments or, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's just a bit of telly. OK, calm down, yeah. everyone. But, uh, no, it's great. And what I love about Julian's writing is that whenever you think uh, you've, you've got a character sussed or pigeonholed, <coughs> Julian surprises you. Yeah. And there are twists and turns of character. Which of us is actually consistent in our lives, I, I, I would ask you. Yes. Um, and uh, <coughs> Robert is no exception. I think uh, sometimes people have found it too far, but, uh, you know, he's human. or oh, he's three-dimensional anyway. And in many ways, he's the character who kind of embodies the age, isn't he? Because a lot of... I think Julian interweaves a lot of issues, interestingly, to your character. Like, it, this whole thing about Catholicism, I thought, was interesting that's happening at the moment. And you're the one who gets to say some quite kind of yeah. difficult, interesting stuff. Well, it? Julian's allowed to say that because he's a Catholic. You right. know, he's brought up a Catholic, so I think that's fine. But also, you could equally, you could say that Anna Leach's character, Branson, is having a good old anti-Protestant, anti-British bash yes. know, a lot of the time. So I think it's fairly well balanced. I'd like to think it's fairly well balanced. And I think the thing about Robert is that he's... You know, he's, stuck, he's got one foot stuck in the past, in fact, sometimes both feet. And uh, he, in the first series, you know, you felt that he was actually being conservative by birth. He had a sort of liberal tendency mm. and had an eye of compassion and on the, you know, the estate at large. And then gradually you've seen that he's sort of shrinking back into what he knows best or what he hopes will, yeah. you know, re re return eventually. And, of course, it, it won't. And that's part of the, the drive of the uh, spoilers uh, of the episodes <laughs> coming up, which is that Dan's character, um, you know, Matthew, who is the heir, really has to almost take Robert by the hand and lead him into the future because yeah. he's reluctant to go there. Absolutely. And, Joan, what did you think of your character to start with? A, to start with, when you first were off of the role, and now, how she's developed now? Um, I just fell in love with Anna as soon as I, as soon as I read her on the page. Julian has this great way of um, putting these characters together in, in a, such, as Hugh said, a three-dimensional way that you only have to read them, you know, those characters being in a, a couple of scenes in a script and you yeah. know who they are and you get a real sense for them. And I just really connected with her and I just thought, 
I just thought she's the kind of person you'd really want as a best friend. Um, she's just such a good, decent person. But I liked that she had a strength about her. I didn't want her to be some wishy-washy, kind of, you know, boring, nicey-nicey uh, person. I wanted her to have a bit of, a bit, you know, a backbone and all of those things, which Julian had written. So I just tried to develop what Julian gave me in that way. And mm. I like, um, what I love about Anna is obviously the storyline with Mr. Bates because it's just so, <laughs> so nice to play those scenes and to watch that, you know, um, that relationship develop in such mm. a slow, in such a slow way. That was really enjoyable to do. And through that, she, she grows over the three series and, and, you know, really becomes a woman and yeah. she's a married, you know, she's a married lady now and the well, trials and tribulations yeah. they've been through. She's kind of become also kind of her own investigator almost. She's going out oh, there. Oh, Anna Bates investigates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the spin-off. Yeah, that's the spin-off. Yes, yeah. that's my spin-off. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, but do you know what I mean? She has, really, that, that's been a very interesting development, isn't it? That I guess, uh, and, and something new, I think this series that you know we wondered how that was going to play out and when he ends up in prison and what's going to happen she's become such a kind of key figure in that in, the, in that story that must be very exciting to have to because I guess when there's there is such a huge cast that you must think sometimes oh how you know what's going to happen to my character is it going to is it going to stand out among such an, an enormous ensemble yeah I think Julian's you know again fantastic at, at writing an ensemble piece and therefore we, we all get our 15 minutes of yeah. fame within the show you know we all have our strengths and our weaknesses and and stuff and so you know when you're filming some scenes you're you know you're supporting the scene or you're in the background of the scene and sometimes you're leading the scene and um he you know he, he kind of spreads it out very fairly which is good but i think with anna she's um you know she's good when she's got a purpose and she's got a mission and her mission at the moment is to to free her man and mm. um you know nothing will stray her from that path so it's nice, I think, she's much more... The start of Series 3, she was much more positive than at the end of Season 2, when obviously Mr Bates was possibly, um, you know, going to get the death sentence. Yeah. So when he was reprieved, um, at least she had something to fight for and she had hope and, you know, all those things that, that I love about her. Yeah, so. yeah. And what's it, I was lucky enough to visit the set, and it is... I mean, the, 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 a lot of the scenes are filmed in High Clear, this enormous house, which, is, which plays Downton, if you like. Is it odd to film this a lot of it in this in this actual place? You know what I mean, I guess people might think, oh, it's all you know, cardboard sets and <laughs> and, uh, and polystyrene. But there you are filming in this massive, massive house. Is that is that interesting? Is it, it a challenge? It's great. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I mean, it makes our job a lot easier, doesn't it? It's everything's almost done for us. I, with, I remember the first day I pulled up onto set, and um, it was at the house, and. Um, I knew we were filming at an actual house and I'd seen pictures and stuff. I didn't expect it to be so grand in, in, in mm. reality. And we just pulled up into this, you know, overwhelming, amazing building. And I just thought, yeah, I think this is going to be quite a good mm. show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also just, I mean, you know, even for three years on, I, I don't know if you remember that as you come into the drive, it's, it's yeah. a landscape by Capability Brown. So there's this sense of you know, undulating through the uh, through the, uh, the the road, undulates through the through the paddocks yeah. and the fields, yeah. and you get glimpses of the house, you know, ever, ever increasing yeah. glimpses, and then suddenly there it is, and it's it never fails to sort of turn my tummy yeah. over. It's yeah. great. It's, it's very incredibly exciting. dramatic. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. The long drive up and yeah. all that. Yeah, really and freezing in February. Yeah, really yeah. cold. <laughs> really. Yeah. No, I'm sure. But it's high up, so it's it's yeah. yeah it's winds from five counties. I was told by someone that there's one room that the owner's never even been in the house. Is that, is that, have you heard that story? Is that true? Yeah, well, Lady Carnarvon, I think she said she's lost, uh, lost count of the number of rooms in the attics. Yeah. Um, doesn't someone say, you know, once you've got more than 50 bedrooms, what's the point of counting? But yeah. uh, it, hasn't yeah. got, it hasn't got that many. But no, the top, the top floors have been, have been derelict. And of course, uh, the former Lord Carnarvon uh, sponsored Howard Carter's expedition to uh, the Valley of the Kings and Tutankhamun and all that wonderful you know, intrigue and mystery and all that. And apparently s some old tea chests that Lady Carnarvon uncovered only a decade ago were full of, sort of old amulets and bits of pottery and stuff, which she's now made into an amazing exhibition. So it's a house full of history as well, well, as, yeah. as, well as our invented one. Yeah. Can I just say, yes. what about Dan Stevens' eyes? I mean, come on. Yeah. They are yeah. so blue. Yeah. He's hot. <laughs> he is hot. He is very hot. Yeah. Is it, I mean, you are surrounded by hot, you know, hot men, women, everything. I mean, the whole cast is, 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 is mostly beautiful. It's a furnace. Yes. Yeah, it's a furnace. We should add that your look at the moment isn't... Uh, a kind of special bearded version of Downton. Is it? You are playing <laughs> a tramp. I'm playing a tramp at the moment. Yeah, I'm doing a thing called Mr. Stink. So yes, yes, I'm, I'm yes. bearded up for that. In case yeah. people think there's a, a strange twist coming up um, <laughs> before the end of the series, was it? Is it fun filming? I mean, do you? Do you? I mean, this is you know. Every, I mean, you're not going to say you don't get on, but do you particularly have a fun time filming it? 
with each other? We do have a ridiculous amount of fun, okay. actually. We we do get on, you know, we all get on so well. And um, it's it's one of the it's just one of the most fun jobs I've ever done, actually. It's and especially the the more we do it, and and obviously we've been working together for three years now, and um, and it is it's just it's, there's some really great personalities in our cast. There's some big personalities, some very very funny people, and um, yeah, and it's it's a real giggle. Hugh, who are the uh, who are the kind of jokers? Who 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 mucks about most in the cast? Uh, well, apart from Isis the dog, it would have to be uh, Alan Leach who plays uh, Branson, yes. who is uh, constantly well, we're constantly winding each other on set and off, um, and uh, we know we have a he's, he's, he's a he's a great great guy, and they all we all get on very genuinely get on very very well, and it doesn't always happen as we know, no, but it genuinely <laughs> does in this. <laughs> do you is there a lot of corpsing? Is there a lot of laughter during takes? You know, do you or do you manage to keep that? Under control. There's not a lot of time for corpses. No, really. No, it's a very, it's a very fast process, the, the filming process, and it, we're on a very tight schedule. So, uh, Michelle Dockery and I did have a corpsing day um, on the last series, where it was, the, you know, it was late in the afternoon, and we were both really tired, and we were joking about something, a, a line in the scene, and then as soon as Michelle went to say it, we just could not stop laughing, and literally we were both in tears. But we <laughs> felt so guilty because obviously there's so much to get done, and it's, yeah, it's yeah. that. You know, it's in school assembly feeling where you think, I shouldn't be doing this, I shouldn't be doing this, yeah. but I can't stop myself. But, and, um, yeah. And I remember the very, the very first scene or second scene that we shot ever uh, <clears throat> that was me and Cora and O'Brien and, and uh, Siobhan bringing in a tray to give Cora on bed with the news of the Titanic. <laughs> and on the uh, very first take, she just went flying and the <laughs> marmalade and the toast wow. and everything went right. And we didn't know each other very well then, you know, uh, certainly not me and Siobhan. And we just absolutely dissolved in hysterics. Uh, and so that broke the ice in a good way. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and the China, broke the China too. <laughs> <laughs> what about Dame? I mean, you, you have a lot of scenes with Dame Maggie Smith. Oh, I, oh, I, every, pretty much every line she gets is a great com comedy line, great comedy moment. Mm. I'm, is it difficult to work with that, to have to deal with her having all these great comedy <laughs> lines? No, it's great. You just sort of, you know, just throw up a lob and just wait for her to smash it. Right. But, you know, it's, uh, no, it's just a joy because, uh, you know, Julian writes for her and her brilliant delivery, which is just fantastic to sit back and absorb, really. And uh, she nails them every time. Yeah. And this series you've been joined by Shirley MacLaine, of course. What, mm. What's that been like? How, were you kind of... What did you think, first of all, when you heard about the casting, and a kind of bold, interesting new development? And B, what was she actually like in person, this kind of legend? Uh, well, casting-wise, I just thought, wow, that's, that's genius casting, just fantastic. Um, and, uh, I mean, I didn't really have any scenes with Shirley because our characters wouldn't have, you know... Sure. Um, have spoken to each other. So, um, but I was in a, I was in the background of a scene that she was in, and so I walked on set, and I hadn't met Shirley yet. And um, in it was in the scene in the first uh, or second episode, I think, where she's uh, they have a house party and she sings. So she was uh, practicing her song at the piano, yeah. all dressed in her amazing outfit and big feather in her in her hat. And so I just walked on set, and there's amazing <laughs> Shirley MacLaine stood there singing. I was like, this is so surreal. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, and yes, yeah, she was just a joy. We loved having her around. She yeah. just rolled her sleeves up, got stuck in, didn't she? She was great fun. She, she was, was fantastic. Fun. And, they, and they'd, uh, sh she and, and Maggie had apparently met uh, briefly at the Oscars uh, oh. 40 years ago. Shirley wow. had forgotten that. Wow. And, um, uh, and so when they met in the in the hall, I can remember it vividly. They were, it was a sort of quarter to eight just before we start rehearsing in the morning, you know, on a cold uh, February or March day um, with these big puffer jackets on everyone trying to, you know, cuddling hot water bottles. And uh, the director said, oh, well, Shirley, have you met Maggie? And she turned around and, and, and it was like, Stanley meeting Livingston, it really yeah. was. It was, my God! <laughs> you know, and they hugged and sort of virtually <laughs> lifted each other off the ground. And uh, we knew we were in for a good few weeks because wow. they got on famously. And just to, you know, just to sit at these dining room scenes, as I so often do, uh, yes. <laughs> and, and uh, to have you know, M Maggie on one side and Shirley on the other, and them sort of leaning across discussing Jack Lemmon and L Olivier and you know, all these oh. greats that, that I grew up uh, you know, um, admiring so much, and they were all muckers to them. So it was fascinating to pick was, up tidbits. Yeah, you know, it was the only time I was really jealous of not being an upstairs character, <laughs> yeah, not being able to be privy to those conversations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Dame Maggie must have an incredible array of stories. From, uh... Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. None of which can be repeated here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, 
the other thing I was going to say is, I guess the casting of Shirley MacLaine reflects the, the show's, to some extent, huge popularity in America. And I mentioned before how this series doesn't start till January, so we can't, for the podcast reasons, we don't give you too much away. What, what do you think about the international success of it and the fact that, you know, you have to kind of bear in mind that it's being shown at a different time all over the world? To be honest, this is a, quite a passion of mine. Yeah. Um, and I would urge distributors all around the world in this internet age, I mean, you're watching this at home uh, on your devices of various sorts now, the podcast version, you know, you are seeing things immediately, in real time. And the idea of trying for everyone to keep stum about what's happening in different parts of the world is increasingly impossible. Yeah. Quite apart from what's being downloaded legally or illegally, it makes sense for everyone to have a shorter uh, release window, be it in movies or TV, particularly, obviously, uh, not everywhere, not for all shows, but for very popular <coughs> shows, which uh, in this day and age can be spoiled instantaneously, mm. immediately. And uh, I really hope that the uh, release windows will get narrower and narrower. Obviously, different countries have different seasons, literally different seasons, and would you show a, a sort of warm, uh, cosy winter show in high summer? You know, that's a risk you're going to have to take. Will the audience now, for a show like Downton, or be it Sherlock or Doctor Who, which is does have uh, same day in, the, in mm. America. You know, will that audience stay loyal now? I suspect they would. And I think you'd, you'd not wipe out, but you'd reduce piracy instantly. Um, and also, more importantly, rather than watching on some poxy uh, laptop, uh, which has got stuttering, downloading, or whatever, and you're getting ne not necessarily good quality. You can watch it on your telly in beautiful HD with amazing sound, which is the way that we shot it and we want it to be watched. So you're sort of cheating yourselves as much as anything. Um, and it's, I know it's incredibly hard in this day and age to, to wait for it to come up, and it's very hard for people who are engaged in online conversations to keep quiet. But uh, I hope one way around it is for is for release patterns to be, release windows to be to mm. be uh, brought more you know into a narrower time frame. And because we're used to American shows that we watch here now, I think most channels are cottoning on to the fact that people want to see the American show as soon, almost as soon as it goes out in the States, so that mm. it's not spoiled for us. Yeah, do you mm. agree with that, Joe? Is that something that? You yeah, I mean, when we we've done quite a few press visits to the States, um, you know, t together among, amongst a group of us, and um, that's. The main feedback we get, actually, isn't it, when we're out there, is from everybody saying, "Why do we have to wait so long?" And mm. you know, and you do get the odd person saying, "We've already seen it." <laughs> um, so, which we're not allowed, you know, obviously we can't be yeah. doing that. Um, somehow they've seen. Somehow, it. I'm not yeah. sure how. <laughs> so um, it does. It does seem to make sense that you know people want to see it that quickly, yeah. and especially when a show has become a success like Downton or Doctor Who or Sherlock and all those things that have, have been successful overseas. It does. You know, once it's been tried and tested, it, it does. You yeah. know, makes sense to, to bring those dates closer together so everyone yeah. can see at the same time. You do have a lot of scenes where you're on the verge of tears, don't you? In, in, yeah. recent, in recent weeks, is that difficult? To I blame Mr. That? Bates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, well, the you know, creating the emotion. Yeah. Um, having to cry pretty much, you know, regularly. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, some days it's easier than others. Um, I just look at Alan Leach. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I suppose, you know, it's just, it's like anything. I think it's about concentration more than anything mm. else, actually. It's, it's about just really concentrating on what you're doing and, and what you're supposed to be feeling and, and the situation you're supposed to be in. Um, I actually do a lot less crying on Downton than I have on other jobs, so it's quite, it's quite <laughs> oh, yeah, a holiday for me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Are you specialised in playing a lot of real women who've been through awful situations? Yes. I mean, we should say that, yeah. Yeah. And of which, you, you, you know, you've been nominated for awards, won awards. So was it, in a, in a way, a relief to get a character who's kind of properly fictional and you can portray however the hell you want? It was a nice change. I think as an actor, you, you constantly want to prove how versatile you are and you, you constantly want to ring the changes we have a very short attention span i think i speak for most of us <laughs> so um it's you know you i always need something new and different and, and i want some i want to do a part that's different from the last part and yeah. so, so anna did feel like quite a departure for me and i've really really enjoyed playing her and um, that's not to say i won't go back to my roots at some point and do a, a, a good old gritty traumatic mm. role but um yeah. but it's nice to have those changes sure. And I must ask you about, I mean, the, the hair in that scene, for example, incredible. And uh, hair and costume, I mean, it is a huge part of the success of the show, isn't it, I think? That how people love the kind of sumptuousness of the whole thing, yeah. do you think? And do you enjoy, is that enjoyable for you as well, to be part of all that? I love um, dressing up, or dressing down, as I do in Downton. I think, uh, you know, again, as an actor, it just helps your whole performance. You know, having the costume, we wear corsets. Um, for me, it's a no makeup look and a very plain hairstyle, and, and it, it, 
you know, as soon as I put on my costume, I feel like Anna. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, it's, um, yeah, it's certainly, it certainly helps. And I'm obsessed with the girls' costumes upstairs because I love clothes. So I'm just like, oh my God, that lace is amazing. And oh, that beading's beautiful. And so I enjoy seeing everybody yeah. else's kind of more extravagant outfits. And you've had some good wedding. You know, you've had a great wedding. Gla you know, always nice to get the glad rags yeah. on. But no, the, uh, I think the way that the fashion has subtly changed, obviously from 1912 through mm. to 1921, as we now are, um, 1920, are we? I can't remember. 1920. Um, <laughs> 1920. 1920 yeah. uh, now, yeah. Um, you know, to see that that shift in in, yeah. uh, in in the women's fashion, particularly, and of course for the men, you know, the, the dangerous breaking out from white tie into black tie, um, <laughs> and all that. Uh, no, it's it's fascinating, and of course it's it's you know, it's actually uh, it's actually filtered into the high street in a way. Um, there are some you know brands that have, have been embracing oh, the Edwardian yeah. yeah. uh, you know, look of the twenties. So. Who knows for next season? But I remember Michelle saying that the relief this year is is not having to uh, not having to have such tight courses or not to, not yeah. to have courses at all. We is have, that right? Some people have got away without them, and and some of us still have to wear them. But we've got elasticated courses, um, so it means you can breathe. Uh, no. so that's that's very. So nice. have I actually. I have yeah. elasticated courses. <laughs> Fair enough. You didn't need to tell us that. <laughs> Before I throw it open to the audience for questions, so do be thinking of your questions. Um, I was going to ask, how much do you talk to Julian, Julian Fellows, that the, who writes every episode, doesn't he, on his own, mm -hmm. um, about what's going to happen to your character? Do you do you does he kind of is he there on set ever? Do you talk to him about that, or is he accessible, or do you just are you happy to let him do what he wants to do, and then you find out what's happening to your character? Um, a bit of both, really. He's very accessible, Julian. Uh, you know, he, he's, we've all got a, a very good relationship with him. He, you know, especially during the first series, he came on set and a, a lot, and um, we spent a lot of time with him and his wife Emma, and. Um, so, but we, I think, well, for me personally, I never ask what's going to happen. I'm just, I've kind of got complete faith in where he's going to take, right. Aunt, f for me, Anna and Bates or, or my character. Um, and I've had such nice storylines and such nice things to do that I just think, oh, it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I'd agree, I'd yeah. agree totally. Uh, you know, he's always at the end of a, a phone or whatever if you've got a query, normally in my case about pronunciation. Um, <laughs> Me too, that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he did say, I remember at the read-through of the very first episode, he said, one, one thing I've got to say is that, um, he said, we're not parking cars, it's valet, not valet. Uh, ah, so, yes. <laughs> so that, that was the first lesson. But uh, no, like you, Joe, I, I, uh, I am constantly... You know, is, feel I feel so, totally safe in his hands. He knows his characters better than we do, and uh, the structure of the whole piece and and their their the or, the, the instruments they play in the mm. orchestra of the whole. Yeah, yeah. Have you? What's been the most, if you like, surprising thing for you? The tw the twists or plot developments that you've that you've had so far in these three series? Or perhaps the most enjoyable, kind of pleasurable thing that's happened to your character for you? Um. I don't know. I think every script's a surprise, is it? actually. Okay. It is. It, you know, whenever we get a script through the job, because we, we start off, um, I think the first series we started off, did we start off with four scripts? We read before? five of the oh, four. Oh, we read five. Yeah. We read five. So we, we had quite a chunk, <coughs> yeah. you know, beforehand. Um, and each one, you, you're constantly surprised, really, as, as you know, hopefully the viewers mm -hmm. are as well, because there's all these there's constant twists and turns and everything else. Yeah. So um, when we're in the middle of doing a series and the next script, kind of drops through the letterbox onto my doormat. I'm literally kind of like <laughs> ripping it open to see what happens next. So, um, yeah, that's the kind of constant feeling, no. I think. Okay. Uh, now, we're in the, we, we've got the penultimate episode on Sunday, I believe, mm -hmm. and then the final one after, which is an hour and a half special, mm -hmm. which I was looking at today, and there's a big... That's, that we ca I, I can reveal this without giving too much. There's a big cricket match, mm. which is a very British way yeah. of ending it. Now, I imagine you're a cricket man. You look, you look like very at home in those whites. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was in, my, in my younger days. I was very excited about it. It was good fun, and Dan's a good cricketer. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, in fact, shooting that was one of the biggest challenges we had because, mm. as you may remember, it was a pretty wet spring and summer, and we needed three days to shoot this particular sequence. And uh, we'd already suffered with rain trying to shoot a picnic sequence when we go to visit Airy Home, and that had to move two, if not three times, mm. because of weather. And we were desperate to, the, the, the gods would be 
be kind to us. And on the whole, they've always been really kind to us, the, you know, the weather gods. Mm. Um, all th when it's mattered, they've come good. And this time we had three, it literally was bucketing down the day before, and the heavens opened during the last shot uh, of over three days. So we were very lucky. Uh, yes, and that's a significant part of the final episode. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and I think and there's another Christmas special, isn't there? There's on a the Christmas list. episode, and uh, unlike last year, I think I'm not uh, breaking any contractual things here, it's not actually set at Christmas. Oh, OK. Uh, so uh, it's got a very different tone. It's, um, it, time has moved on a little bit. I think it's about eight or nine months. Um, okay. And, uh, well, I'll leave the rest for your enjoyment. Oh, no, tell us something else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's throw it open to this. Now, first we should say that the, the official Downton Abbey Twitter feed is here. It's a man in a, in a flat cap <laughs> at the front. <coughs> and uh, we, they did throw it open to the huge array of Downton Abbey fans around the world, basically. So have you had any good questions from the Downton Abbey fans via Twitter? Hello, you. Hi, Joe. Hey. Hi, Bo Boyd. Mm. Um, for both, and this is uh, from KBill15, we've got a question... What has been the hardest scene for both of you to prepare for and execute thus far? Good question. Uh, for me, it was probably the scene where, in series two, where Mr. Bates gets uh, sentenced, um, because I knew he was going to get sentenced to death, obviously, because I've read the script. Um, and it was, um, it was that, it was one of those moments where you, I wanted it to be really, um, just just really intense but but not thought out it was just a reaction and i wanted it to be a real gut reaction and it was nice um to be able to play a scene like that for uh, you know playing a woman in those times giving such an emotional reaction in public which you know wouldn't have happened unless you were in some devastating situation like like that one so um and it was that, that was quite difficult, because I kept thinking, oh, how am I going to play this? I'm not quite sure how to do it. And then I just decided, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to see what comes out, you know, on the, on the day. Um, so I think it's, it's not that it was more difficult. It's just the nerves of not quite planning what you're going to do and hoping that that works. And I felt, I felt like it did, so hopefully everyone else did as well. Uh, for me, really, it's, it's any, any scene involving Isis the dog. Because um, <coughs> she's a moody little bitch, and um, <laughs> and she rarely comes out of her trailer, and uh, demands snacks at all times. But uh, that aside, I suspect uh, really the the scenes that we've been touching on in the last couple of episodes, mm. uh, which have been obviously quite you know, trying to pitch them at the right level so that they're not overly melodramatic, but they, they have true emotion in them. Um, and I think particularly the, the the scene towards the end of the last episode that's just been on. When, when uh, Cora and myself and, and, and Violet are all together trying to reconcile what's happened. That was yeah. a, very, it's a very delicately written scene, and, and that was a, a challenge to get that pitched right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to Downton Abbey Twitter feed. We could come Thank back you. to you. Thank you, Kate. Bill. But, and let's throw them to the audience. There's a lady there <coughs> in the second row. Yes. Uh, hi, I just want to say thank you. First of all, I'm American um, and I'm just graduated from high school. I just want to say thank you for bringing such kind of an educational historical show to a lot of kids who normally wouldn't see that sort of stuff. Um, so I want to thank you for that because that's really, really good. Um, and I have a question for both of you. What was the most fun scene you had to shoot? <laughs> um, first of all, I would just, I would just I would just pause on, on going too far down. This is a historically accurate show. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, <but laughs> this is a, a bit of telly, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been had up before for uh, apparently pretending to be otherwise. It is. Uh, it's, it's lovely that you, you you say that. If it sends someone to a history book, then fantastic. But it is telly. Let's <laughs> just get that straight. Um, and it's fictional. Um, I think. I think the most fun scene. Uh, I, I, I remember with huge affection shooting the final episode of, of series one, which was the big sort of garden party, mm. and it, of course, was led to the announcement of war. But I personally love the scenes when we're all together. Mm. It's a nightmare for costume and makeup because they've got 16 central characters to look after and usually a whole load of supporting artists as well. But I love it when we're all together, when, when, the, ens when the ensemble is truly an ensemble. And, that, and the weather, again, was spectacularly kind to us mm. then, and uh, it was just approaching summer, and no-one knew that the show was any good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yet. <clears throat> um, yeah, the same for me, actually. Scenes where we're all together are lovely, because sort of sometimes we don't get to see some of the 
uh, actors for, say, two weeks at a time or something because we're, we're filming in different locations. So um, it's really nice when we all get together and have, have a catch-up and, and, you know, see what everybody's been up to. Um, and I love doing the servants' hall scenes. We have a lot of fun in the servants' hall. Again, it's because it's big group scenes. Um, there's a lot of big personalities downstairs and we have, you know, we have a real giggle. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and we have a lot of fun in the dining room. <laughs> we have more fun downstairs. We actually, <laughs> play, um, yeah, we actually play wink murder. <laughs> in one of those mustard pots are eight little folded bits of paper, one of which has a cross on it. That is a trade secret. Wow. Yeah. Is that what you we, do? Do, we don't do it during the take. We do it between <laughs> takes. <laughs> proper, proper games upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Parlour games. They're very good. Parlour games. Any other mm -hmm. questions? Yes, a lady there. Um, how long does it take to film dinner scenes? Mm. Uh, they're, they're, they are pretty much the longest, I would imagine. As in, in fact, any table scene in any drama takes a long time, simply because, for technical reasons of, of, of eye lines and where you put cameras and so on. But there was, a, I think it was the infamous lobster scene of episode one, of series one, that took two and a half days. Wow. Um, it wasn't, if it wasn't actually lobster, it was something else, but it was something that went really smelly after about four hours. And since then, the, the uh, Lisa, who makes the food for us uh, for, the, for the actual scenes, has learned her lesson that uh, actually having something that goes really high by about 3 p.m. isn't great. Uh, and so she's used much less uh, smelly, smelly products. But they can take up to two days. If you're, uh, and of course, they whiz by on screen in 90 seconds or so, but, but they are quite challenging. So we have to you know, keep ourselves entertained. Wink murder. Wink murder. <laughs> Wink murder. Brilliant. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah. I just wondered if you, got, if you ever had the opportunity to play any other character in Downton, um, oh. who would it be and why? Male or female? Mm, I assist the dog just yes. to annoy you. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> um, who would I play? I don't know, that's a good question, actually. Um, I'd quite like to play Mr. Moldsley. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> but I just love the character Mr. Moldsley. I just think he's forever just missing the mark, bless him. And he's, you know, he's always just never quite getting there. And he, he just, Kevin that plays him is just a, such a brilliant, brilliant. job. And I'd, I'd quite enjoy playing that kind of character, I think, yeah. What's, what's wonderful is that Mosley was a relatively small part in, in the first series, but he made such a mark with everyone, particularly Julian, that it's, it's, he's grown as a character and he's, he's such an integral part now. Um, he's glorious. Um, who would I play? I think uh, I'd like to play Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd all like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> good, very good question. Thank you. Uh, now, I'll just go over here. So my eye, eye line was that way. Yes, lady there at the end of the row. Um, I've heard you have a historical advisor on set, but do you do any other research <coughs> to help you immerse yourself in the culture of the period? Um, we do have a, a fantastic historical advisor called Alistair Bruce, who is... Is, oh, he's just like our... He's called the Oracle. Oh, yes, he is our Oracle. He's amazing. Um, more so when we first started, we had, Alistair gave us a big talk about the etiquette and, um, of, um, you know, for, for the downstairs characters, how you would serve food and, and the way you would do things and how to turn a bed down and all those things. And the etiquette of the day and, you know, and, and, and being in, in that kind of period and the constraints of that period. Um, I watched quite a lot of documentaries about the time just to refresh my memory and we watched Gosford Park again and, and all those things to get, to get that feeling of, of how that kind of household ran. Um, I also read a book called Keeping Their Place which is um, it's real letters and diary entries from servants and their masters and, um, and uh, it's quite interesting to just get that personal take on things as well after reading the facts and figures and things like that. It was nice to hear just um, you know a parlour maid sending a love letter to her to her boy, well, you wouldn't call it boyfriend, but um, and uh, so yes, that was could. quite nice. <laughs> oh, well, yes, you, yeah, do. you do. You do. We've had this conversation, we yes. do, yeah. Oh, boyfriend signs, <laughs> yes, yeah. oh. 1880 something, yeah. excellent. Mm. Uh, I'm rubbish at research, <laughs> I just read the B now. I'm sorry, I'm Fair useless. Enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, should we see if any more, any more um, uh, Twitter feed questions for our official Downton Abbey? I hope you haven't Two. covered any of these so far. But, um, Have you not been paying attention? No. <laughs> I've been doing no. my best, but I've been tweeting. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> no, no. We'll let you know. If, if, there, if there's any repetition, we'll let you know. Quite a nice, simple one. What has your, been your favourite line so far? And that's from Line? Oh. No light, no light, underscore. What is a weekend? Yeah. That one, oh, probably. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. 
My character's favourite line is coming up in two weeks' time, so I can't actually say that. Uh, oh. But I think I think everyone. I mean, there, there are T-shirts around the world with Maggie's great slogans on. So yeah. I think, yeah, what is a weekend? And um, what else? That'll do. What are yours? Let's have some of yours favourite lines. Oh, that's right. Why does every day involve a fight with an American? Oh, yeah. And my other, my other favourite one is, um, <clears throat> if you're turning American on me, I'm going downstairs. Okay. <laughs> that Which could be taken in so many ways. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Thanks, you. <laughs> following, on <laughs> from, from, following on from that, from um, Chow Manu uh, asks, will we ever see Lady Violet going downstairs? Oh. Oh, interesting. I don't know. I think I'm not, again, spoiling anything by saying she doesn't in this series. But I think that would be very interesting, because <laughs> it, it, it is such an interesting sort of seismic shift when, you know, those boundaries are crossed mm. and, 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 the, and the impact, the rippling impact it has. And you know, also, the, you know, the deference that Carson has when he comes into a, into a room downstairs, everyone stands. Yeah. You know, this, the structure is so fascinating, I find. Uh, bonkers, Absolutely. but fascinating. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, lady there, yes. A real person, not someone on Twitter. People on Twitter are real, but they're not here right now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was just wondering, um, why is um, Lord Grantham's like political role not mentioned on the show? Is it just because it might be quite boring? Or this is what? Sorry, his, political his, his political role. role. Well, he's actually a... Uh, uh, I don't know what, what sort of peer... I don't even know what peer... He's a Tory peer, but uh, his... his um, his uh, title comes from his hereditary line. Um, and that's a good point, actually. I, you know, I've never thought about why he doesn't go to the House of Lords. I mean, he pops in, I suppose, to collect the post, but... Um, <laughs> but uh, there are probably loads of Tory peers that couldn't be bothered. To yeah, yeah, I think... I'm just know, guessing. I... Yes, historically. Obviously, yeah, today, sorry. they are yeah, very yeah. active yeah. and vote all the time. Mm. Um, that's a very good question. I shall, I shall email Julian tonight and ask him. Can we go to the House of Lords, please? And you can tweet about it. Because you're a prolific twi Twitterer yourself, aren't you, Hugh? We should, you yes, yes, I sort of... I'm, I binge tweet, yes. Do you? Yes. 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 Sometimes I think it's all nonsense and sometimes I get, really have a nice time I think people it. who are looking at your Twitter feed last night well, might want to know whether you ever found your hotel. Oh, because God. you were encircling <laughs> yes. the XL Centre uh, yes. looking for your hotel. Those who don't know the XL Exhibition <laughs> Centre in Docklands, it's huge. And at night it's dark and last night was drizzly. And my, dare I say, app told me that the hotel was in one place. In fact, it was the entire other length of the XL, and it took me hours to find it. So, uh, yes, I did get to the hotel. Thank you very Good. much. <laughs> uh, we've got time for a couple of more questions. Just a lady at the end there. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, like, um, what are the similarities between you and your characters? Um, well, I'm very nice as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can <laughs> Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I suppose there's um, there's probably more of me in Anna than a lot of other characters I've played. Um, but she's actually she's actually a bit quite she's probably stronger than I am in, in the way that she doesn't care what people think. She's very um, confident in her own mind, and she you know she knows that she's on the right path, and she doesn't um, stray from that for, for anyone really. And that's something I quite admire about her. That I'd like to be a little bit more like that. So. Well, apart from the fact that I'm six foot two, uh, tall like this, and obviously look like Brad Pitt, there, uh, I think that's about as far as it goes. I don't, I don't share a huge amount in common with him. I would say I, I, I'd like to think I'm a bit smarter than him. I think I'm a little bit more streetwise than he is. I'm fond of him, but I don't think over. I think our dinner conversation would dry up after the soup, because um, <laughs> I don't think I've got. I don't think he's really that worldly wise about what's going on out, outside his domain um, necessarily. I think he's a, he's a, he's a decent man, he's a kind man, he means well but let's face it, in this series he's made a couple of bad calls mm. um, but then I suppose all those people who invested with Bernie Madoff made some bad calls too um, but uh, I think he's a, he's a decent guy which I'm not and, uh, <laughs> and I, what I don't have is his heating bills either <laughs> No one wants those, do they? <laughs> and one more, the gentleman there, there we go. We haven't had many questions from men, it's, it's, but here we are. Thank you. Hi, my question's for Joanne. Um, just picking up on the name of that book that you used to research, do you ever think that Anna doesn't keep her place, particularly with Mary, and is more like a sister than a servant? Um, yeah, I think, well, I think Anna's always aware of the constraints of her role in the house, and, but I think um, because she's become such a... Uh, you know, well-trusted, uh, well-loved member of staff. Um, there is, there's been that room to, to grow that relationship with her and Lady Mary, which has been a really nice thing to play. And, and again, that's happened very gradually over the series. And 
Um, and you see little points where occasionally where, you know, that line is, is put down again by Lady Mary. Um, I think it's a point in series two where she, she kind of chastises Anna for, for not saying something to Matthew, or for saying something to Matthew about something. Um, so it's, it's always really interesting, sir, because we, we never hug each other or we never go that extra step, but it's nice to develop um, that friendship in that way because I think it makes it more interesting, actually, than a free relationship in a way. Mm, mm. Mm. That's very good. Actually, thank you. That is all we've got time for, I'm mm. afraid, but um, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank the Apple Store for hosting us. And this time, next Wednesday, more Downton <laughs> Chat. Um, in a week and a day's time. And I just want to thank you two, Joanne Frogger and Hugh Bonneville. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> oh, yes.